Good morning. Welcome to Morning Devotions. And um, thanks so much for tuning in. As we get ready for Christmas, waiting for Christmas, waiting for Jesus. And that's our theme is Advent, um, all the way up to Christmas. And we've been talking, at least for a while now, with John as a, a figure of waiting and of Advent. It's true. Even though he was born about the same time as Jesus, he doesn't figure into the Christmas stories. He's not in the manger or out in the fields where the shepherds are, but he's very much a part of Advent because he symbolizes all of us waiting for the Messiah. And this is the third one we are going to, um, uh, third study about John or devotion about John. And before I read the text, I do have a question. Are you good at lifting other people up, of uh, helping others, of uh, pushing them forward and you stepping back? Um, are you good at helping people to fulfill their potential? That's a pretty deep question, I know. and uh, But it's one worth thinking about especially as we read this text in the Gospel of John. And of course, the Gospel of John, tradition says, was written by the Apostle John, not John the Baptist. And um, But John the Baptist does figure into the Gospel of John. And so we're going to pick it up in chapter 1, starting at the 22nd verse. And the Pharisees and the representatives from the Sanhedrin the ruling religious body, and others are questioning John. And they come to this dialogue, starting at the 22nd verse. Finally, they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. John was a very wise individual, a wise follower of Christ even though he didn't know Christ that well, Jesus that well. In what sense do I mean that? Well, first, John wasn't about himself. He was given multiple opportunities to take titles like Messiah or Elijah or prophet. He said, no, that's not me. I'm just doing what I was told to do. And secondly, John pointed to Jesus. He lifted Jesus up as the one to go to. You know, that's a, another prototype, archetype of the way we live our Christian life. First, don't put ourselves forward saying, look at me. It's all about me. You know, I have a email that I uh, use that for a long time I didn't want to use because it's Carl Billings at me, M-E dot com. And then I started to have fun with it. And I would give that email and then I would use the phrase because it's all about me. And hopefully people will laugh. Every once in a while, someone would look at me like, really, do I take myself that seriously? And I tried to explain it was a joke. Those were awkward moments. But the point is, that it shouldn't be all about me or all about you. But rather, 
we should point to Jesus and give thanks and praise to God for our gifts because he created us, he redeemed us, and he empowers us with his spirit. For our life, for the same reason. For our salvation, because of what Jesus was willing to do. Now, one way we can do that is not just lifting up Jesus, but turning and lifting up others, seeing the good in others, seeing others' gifts and being able to help them reach their potential, whether that's a child or a grandchild or a spouse or a brother or sister or a friend or a neighbor or someone you work with. That's doing a John, putting yourself second and them first. In fact, considering that Jesus came and lived the life of a servant, and died on a cross for our salvation, when we lift others up, that's doing a Jesus. And that's another way to help us wait for the coming of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you praise and thanks that you created us, that you redeemed us, and that you empower and equip us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to always point to you with our life and words. Help us to lift others up, to empower and equip them as you have us. We pray this in your precious Son's name, the incarnate, crucified, and resurrected Lord Jesus. Amen. Be hope-filled, stay strong, and God bless.